Now, it is a question that has puzzled scientists for centuries. Are we alone on the third rock from the sun, or is there life out there in the infinite abyss? Scientists at Harvard University say they may be one step closer to that answer, claiming to have recovered material that originated outside our solar system for the first time in history. The tiny spheres were discovered at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, and Professor R.V. Loeb, known as the world's foremost alien hunter, says they may even be the debris of a UFO. But not everyone is entirely convinced. To find out more, let's talk to the man himself, Professor R.V. Loeb, author of Interstellar, The Search for Extraterrestrial Life and Our Future Beyond Earth. Thank you so much for making time for us. And please explain this to an idiot, because you are, when it comes to things like this, in the simplest terms, what you found and what it means. Thanks for having me. Well, about a decade ago, US government satellites spotted a fireball from an object that collided with Earth, uh, roughly half a meter in size, and uh, it moved very fast, in fact, faster than 95% of the stars in the vicinity of the sun. And uh, moreover, it was also tougher than all the space rocks uh, reported by NASA over the past decade. So that raised the possibility that maybe it's a Voyager-like uh, meteor, an object that uh, resembles the spacecraft that we launched. Um, and uh, the question is whether it's technological in origin or natural. So we went to the Pacific Ocean, collected uh, droplets that were melted off the surface of the object and landed on the ocean floor uh, about two kilometers deep. And we brought them back uh, to Harvard University, 700 of them, and studied their composition. And amazingly, over the past two months, we realized that they are made of uh, a composition that is very different from solar system materials. And therefore, we conclude that this object came from outside the solar system, a very different environment. And of course, to figure out if it's indeed technological or natural, we need to find bigger pieces. So that will be the subject of a future expedition. How does this uh, differ from other reports we've heard of kind of sightings and various things? You know, there was this House of Representatives Oversight Committee that we had just a few weeks ago. Whistleblower was talking about the US government covering up knowledge from the public about extraterrestrial particles or objects. You know, again, very simply explain to us how what you've discovered is something new. Well, the difference is that we found the materials, we found the evidence, we are sharing it publicly, whereas the discussion in the Congress was all about hearsay. There was a person who heard uh, from 40 other people that there are these programs, but he hasn't seen the materials himself. And so we didn't see the evidence as of yet. It's all about the evidence. The work of a scientist is to collect the evidence uh, analyze the materials and reach uh, conclusions that are shared with everyone. That's what I'm trying to do. Now, you have come up against some disputes within your scientific community. I'm, I'm sure this isn't a very pleasant thing to do, but I'm going to let the audience know. Dr. Matthew Genge of Imperial College London basically saying seafloor is littered with spherules, some natural, some artificial. You can find all sorts down there. Professor Matthew Garrett, University of Manchester, says, I really admire Arvi's enthusiasm in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, but I'd be surprised if this recent effort is going to produce conclusive evidence. Why is it that you're coming up against these kinds of objections within your community? Well, because experts uh, uh, have their stature based on past knowledge, I'm trying to get new knowledge that is not in line with their past knowledge. So that makes them a little upset and they reject it ahead of time. But I have the evidence. We did the scientific analysis. It's not a matter of opinion. Whatever the instruments show us, we report. And that's the way science is done. I'm really surprised that people have opinions before looking at the data. That is not the way science should be done. And uh, of course, the ocean is littered with uh, spherules, the type of droplets that we found. But we did find droplets that are common elsewhere, outside of the region where the meteor crashed. And in the meteor site, we found an excess of those droplets of a completely different nature. That's the whole point of our paper. And just finally, uh, within your book, you talk about this theory of um, government should invest $2 trillion a year in space exploration, as say, opposed to, you know, spending money on weapons and blowing each other up on Earth, which we'd have to sort out first. Do you think that you'll ever see that kind of consensus towards space exploration? 
Well, John Lennon said that, uh, imagine all the people living in peace. And I do believe that the wake up call from a neighbor might change our priorities because first we would realize that we are not the smartest kid on the block. And we can learn from others who were more intelligent because they reached our doorstep before we reached their doorstep. And so I think there is a lot to hope for that perhaps everyone on earth would realize we are all in the same boat, the earth sailing through space, and we should work together rather than fight each other. Well, I've certainly learned something from somebody more intelligent this evening, RV Loeb. Thanks so much for making time for us. Thanks for having me.